you didn't get to see the uh giant chickens the, the <laughs> leggings that my friend jen got me for christmas which i picked up yesterday when uh when i was over there hanging out with her they're they're thematic let me see if i can show you these they're maybe not so twitch streaming has, leggings <laughs> yeah <laughs> and they're plaid <laughs> all right um Guys, we are going to try to stream live on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook and you can see or hear us, uh, let us know so we can see what you're doing. We're going to try to do this a bit more on Facebook Live because we know people have uh, issues seeing us from other different places. So welcome to episode 64 where we're going to talk Yay. about what it's like to prime paint and seal dinner of the winter months. Uh, of course, I have no clue what that means because... I have winter months. don't have really high winter months and I don't give a damn if it, you know, it goes crazy, but we do have people that have issues with it and it's something we're going to be doing. Uh, Kathy is going to be painting. Um, I'm going to switch my camera so you can see me painting instead of my beautiful face. <laughs> um, and we'll get this going. Let me add this camera. Don't be making no mocking fingers at me, John. I will. <laughs> Look, I mean, I, people need to know there was air quotes around beautiful. Yeah. So let me add this. <laughs> Overload humidity is all I know. <laughs> yeah, this... uh, I just hope it doesn't keep going all night because it's actually starting to cover again. Hold on a second. I'm going to add this. I personally am working on some kill team terrain that I promised I would do. Um, for this local, for my local store. So that's what I'm working on. Kathy is working on some more goblets. Yeah, I have uh, the one I'm working on right now is from Redbox Games. He's all for the muscles. Muscles on his muscles. Muscles uh, on his muscle. So this one's Redbox Games, and the rest of them are I don't. I don't know who makes the other ones. This was another bunch that somebody sent me, and I don't know where they came from. I imagine it was from a Kickstarter. Probably. That's always probable. Lots so, of Kickstarters from miniatures he, going out there. Yeah, this guy, this guy does. Game. Yeah. This guy's big into uh, getting models from Kickstarters. <laughs> All right. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Meanwhile, I'm trying to figure out how to make the perfect pink for a tongue. Perfect oh. pink for a tongue? Mm -hmm. uh, I usually find that uh, straight out of the pot onto my palette, then onto the model. Tongue yeah, pink? Thinking. Is Absolutely. it tongue pink? Because I don't have that color. <laughs> uh, just so you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, any pink is tongue pink. Tongue pink. pink. <laughs> My painting standards are low. Super, super low. That is not tongue pink. Paint on a model is good enough. That's a little, little much. That's I would say you're getting pretty far from pink on that. Yeah. That's, That's a much more almost magenta. It is. It is actually. Yeah. It's hard to tell if the if the light, you know, uh, washing it out or. Oh, whatever. that was absolutely magenta. It, it's harder to see on the palette. So often. Uh, I'll put the color on my hand because it seems like the camera picks it up better uh, for some reason on my skin than it does on the palette, but probably because the palette's blue. Fair enough. So, it's taken me a while to get used to mixing colors on a blue palette. Yeah, that's kind of definitely uh, messes you a little bit. Yeah. So... So we're talking about priming, though, huh? Ah, but before we got to do, we got a tradition to go through. Kathy, what are you drinking today? Uh, not paint oh, water. Not paint water, no. I don't do that. <laughs> I rinse my brushes in my coffee sometimes. Oh, I've done that before numerous you times. Know, I've never uh, had the pleasure of drinking the paint water. So I'm drinking rum and coke. Jim has just made me tea, and it's steeping right now. Oh. Uh. So, and I think it's pomegranate tea. Pomegranate. 
John, what? what's your uh, paint? What's your paint? What's your drink? What's your paint what's drink today? Paint you're drinking today. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not painting, so I'm not drinking paint water. I forget. <laughs> sure. uh, well, I just finished my Fireball and Dr. Pepper. Uh, so uh, I went down and made an actual screwdriver, not a virgin screwdriver. Gonzo, what are you drinking? Um, I had to finish off a bottle of uh, Cabernet. Had to. So, had to. I mean, I had to. So I'm drinking uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from Kendall Jackson. Did you have steak with it? No, today was Chinese. So I've got Chinese in my <laughs> belly and going to just now pretty soon put uh, Cabernet Sauvignon in there. I also have Chinese in my belly. <laughs> So, um, so to everybody there, John, do we need any toast from anybody or is it just pretty much we good this Thankfully, year? Thankfully, no. Thankfully. All right. Uh, so for all of our friends out there, uh, if you're watching us on Facebook live or on Twitch, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. 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 Ah. Oh, Guys, we have to get through some business real quick before we go and get started on the stories and the jokes and watching Kathy paint really awesome. Um, we do have uh, a new sponsor. Uh, if you're on our Facebook group, we do have a new sponsor. Uh, Muse on Minis is sponsoring our podcast now. Um, and all everything we do, which we're really grateful for. Uh, they've given us a 10% code for everybody. So if you buy things from Muse on Minis, you put in the code on the discount code more than dice, all one word. You get 10% off your order. Um, and everything, uh, remind you, they also do, you know, they do token sets, flat terrain, 3d terrain, um, and for many different variety of games. Uh, mm -hmm. so you can go ahead and see them and get all their stuff going. Also make sure you take and see us. Hey, Emily, thanks for watching. Um, and doing a bunch of things on top of that. Uh, Mechanica studios is also one of our sponsors. Uh, Chris will be giving us some, uh, discount codes to give away to gift certificates. Awesome. Also. Which I think is really cool because that means you can go get whatever you want with our uh, coupons. Um, also, Tectonic Craft Studios. Again, Dan, thanks for sponsoring us. He is going to be providing us a bunch of things that we can paint online uh, and put up and give away later on during podcasts. Uh, which I think is even cooler um, because I get to do and work with some of his stuff. Uh, so we want to thank all of our sponsors for helping us out and keeping the lights on. So to all of our sponsors. Thank you very much, sponsors. Cheers, Cheers for the sponsors. Yay. Like we need an excuse to drink, right? Exactly. Oh, and uh, <laughs> welcome to everyone who's hearing us on the Muse Network now. Um, we should probably give a little uh, little intro in a bit, but uh, if you uh, like what you hear and you want to support us, uh, go to www.patreon.com slash more than dice and maybe throw a couple bucks and helps us keep uh, our equipment up to date and uh, defray the cost of doing business, which is very useful for us. Yes. Um, yeah. Which, if you like what you're doing, um, we have some cool rewards on Patreon uh, mm -hmm. that you can go and see what we're doing. Including getting all the episodes early. Plus. Especially all the extra stuff we do. All the extra stuff early. Extra. There's a crap ton of extra stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We just don't do podcasts. We do podcasts. We do... They uh, stream live role-playing. Some yeah. more podcasts. <laughs> more podcasts. We... Uh, we do, uh, I, I run a Donner the Harbinger, which uh, we will be coming back n this Tuesday. That's uh, Star Wars uh, RPG. Yeah, Star Wars yep. RPG with Tim Banky, uh, Max, Evan, and Jackie, which everybody that's listened to us before knows about Jackie. Yep. Um, and then um, John has Mediocre Trouble in the Big Easy, which is a feng shui. Feng shui. Uh, uh, with, uh, my feng shui with... A slightly different than my normal crew, but they're amusing people, and it's good fun. Um, uh, eventually, we'll go back to the Adventures of Sewer Bear, but, uh, you know, letting stuff play out a little bit. Um, also, Kathy streams live on Twitch Mondays and Thursdays, uh, yep. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central. And come watch her paint better than we do. Of course. It's Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> She's the talent. We're just a comedic response. And then if you guys have any ideas for stuff you want us to cover, feel free to, uh, you know, throw those ideas our way. We're always happy to get ideas. Oh, yeah. Movies yeah. you want to hear us cover, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Just Games you'd like to hear our thoughts about. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can, you can usually find rules for the games pretty easy, and we can definitely take a look at the game, give you some ideas. Um, to go further into it, since we have a whole new market here, uh, Kathy is the painter, Gonzo is the tournament guy, the, the convention goer, and I am the filthy casual. <laughs> which is, That's why we like you. <laughs> which is weird if you figure out what I was doing originally, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. Yeah. I've never been that serious. But, uh, yeah, like I said... Uh, Welcome, and uh, I guess we get on to our main topic of talking about how to prime and such in the winter months. Yeah, because, uh, of course, the months are here, and <laughs> everything is coming around. Now, myself, I don't care. Uh, the only thing I worry about is when I seal a miniature and it doesn't frost up, but that's just me. Um, so let's go ahead and go with the first thing. Of course, uh, after cleaning your miniature and getting things done, um, we go with, um, priming. Kathy, if I'm going to use a rattle can, cause we're going to just go with everything based off of you because you're the expert Ah, that's funny. <laughs> it's not really true. <laughs> um, what do you do for priming? I mean, I know that you have started doing airbrush priming a lot more. Is that right? So I haven't used a rattle can since my friend gave me some Krylon plastic primer to prime the Blood Bowl figures that uh -huh. I was painting for him. And that actually worked really well for plastic models. I was very surprised. It was a really glossy, smooth finish, so I was uh, worried that the paint was not going to adhere, you know, as well as the uh, at the time I was using the GW Rattle Can White. But it turns out that uh, that, that Krylon plastic uh, primer was really cool. It was a little on the thicker side. You could see it maybe filling in some of the really uh, shallow details, maybe. But I have, that's that was years ago. I haven't used uh, that kind of primer in forever. Uh, it used to be, since we live in Chicago, there's a million different weather, you know, <laughs> yes. experiences. You go out and it's it's super humid. You go out and it's zero degrees. You go out and it's, you know, 40 mile an hour winds, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a hundred and a hundred percent humidity or, you know, it's snowing like it is now, you know, it's, it, and always we would be like, well, I can't go out and prime today. So I guess I'll have to wait. Well, since we do this for a living, we need to have stuff primed when we need it primed yeah. we can't just wait for the weather to correspond so we started using you know and i <clears throat> i have all my paint here so i have steinal res i don't know if this is backwards to y'all but uh steinal res makes a ton of different colors of primer and that's the badger airbrush mm -hmm. uh primer and obviously it's meant to be used through an airbrush but we brush it on long before we even got an airbrush we were using this as a brush on primer and it's i like the different colors because you know now you you can kind of have a, a bit of a base coat or kind of you know tone it towards the colors that you're going to be using i did that on uh all of these guys to start out with and then I just dry brushed another yellow color over it. It was it was this brown color originally. And then uh, Jim did a dusting, it looks like, of uh, a lighter color over it with the airbrush and then handed them off to me. And So I'm taking it from there. But, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff like... All so are you guys. primarily, I mean, you don't do rattle can anymore, but are you nope. airbrushing or are you just brushing the stunnel rest stuff on? These guys, I just brushed it all on. Okay. All of my Geller Pox, I just brushed on the Steinal res. Uh, and, uh, but if you've got an army of stuff to do, if you've got 30 guys, 40 guys, you know, then airbrush. Airbrush and Steinal res is your friend. Or... I mean, if it's easier for you to get your hands on the Vallejo primers, you know, do that. Well, I have recently started uh, airbrush priming more than anything right now because it, it is colder now and it's just becoming a whole lot easier to just prime while I'm sitting at my desk. Uh, I don't, and also because 
I want to get more practice with my airbrush. And so this is an easy way to practice with the airbrush because I don't have to worry about the, you know, where it's going to be, um, getting it really close, you know, so on and so forth, you know, as a, um, wait, are we, wait, wait, hold on. We are, are live. we not on? We're live. Because We're live. I have, I have, we're hosting what we'll play again. No. Oh, I wonder if it went back in. No, we should be live. No, we're live. I, I've got us right here. Okay. I um, just had to refresh. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, refresh. that's the reason why we're doing this on Facebook Live also now, guys, is because of all the fun stuff that happens on everybody else. <laughs> yeah, fair. Hey, Jason, thanks for following us. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us on here. Um, guys, so I... Um, been priming with my airbrush because it helps me learn with it and I don't have to be careful keeping it in the lines or worry about anything like that because it's just going all over the model. Now I do take it and um I, I do take it and do a little bit better and kind of play with it as I'm priming. That way I can just kind of learn the techniques and stuff. But for the most part it's pretty much excuse me. It's pretty much uh go over it real quick and hurried like um mm -hmm. i know that if i do a rattle can because that's what i used to do uh and it's during these times of the month i typically go to my garage uh it's a little bit colder of course it's still cold in the garage but it's not as cold so i'm able to kind of control a little bit of the temperature because you can get some pretty bad priming whenever you're priming in the cold weather. Um, doesn't stick as well. Can cause flaking. Stuff like so that. So I've heard if you keep the models in a similar temperature to the uh, primer, that'll help too. Okay. So there's no temperature difference between them. I didn't know that. Um, now, that's heard I haven't actually experienced because when it's this cold, I just don't prime or I prime yeah. using the, uh, I actually use the Vallejo Surface Primer. Yeah. Uh, which is very similar to the uh, Steinal Res from Badger, Badger Airbrush, but yeah. uh, I also brush it on mostly. It's good for airbrushes apparently, but I just brush it on because I don't have an airbrush. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, all the models I've not painted recently have been primed with that. <laughs> Yeah. Including the ones I've painted recently, which was not that recent, but still. <laughs> uh, even have a little, little Armada fighter. I was going to paint up like the Ghost, and that's just, you know, brush on with the uh, surface primer. Works pretty well. Hey, Chase, thanks for watching us. Um, so, I mean, for the most part, it seems like a lot of people are moving more to moving away from the rattle can and going to either brush on or airbrushing primer so maybe priming in the cold weather isn't as bad because everybody's kind of moving away from that what do you think well i mean with the with an airbrush you're still going to want to uh, do it in a ventilated area too oh, of course so some people don't have the luxury of having some place in their house that you know where you can have a set up a little hood you know like you can get on Amazon these little ventilation hoods, oh, for uh, which are perfect for airbrushing models. Oh, are we supposed oh, to have an airbrushing hood? Yeah. Yeah, those ones are super sweet. My all my buddies have them. Ooh, I just realized my camera is backwards on my main screen. Hold on, let me flip that around, guys. <laughs> um, I, I will still use a rattle can if I can. Um, it is quicker and easier, but often, especially nowadays, I'm not priming a ton of models at once. So, I mean, I, I think the rattle can strength is lies in the, uh, if you're doing a whole bunch at once, like if you got a big project, like if I've got all these, you know, models for Blackstone Fortress and I want to prime them all at once, I'm not going to brush it on them all. I'm going to hit a rattle can up with them. Because... Absolutely. Well, and that's what the, the airbrush is good for is to do a mass bunch of them. But I've got, I mean, the Geller Pox, I think for maybe 20 models, and most of them were small. So it was not a big deal for me to just uh, sit here and, and <coughs> slap the primer on them. But, yeah, if you've got an army to do, yeah, you want to you wanna get the airbrush or the rattle can. Yeah, and it's, it's going to save good. you a lot of time. Yeah, it's also a good batch. Like, if you're like, 
this is all the models I want to paint, you know, coming up soon, or a whole army's worth of stuff, just go to it. Get them all going, get them all primed up, and then, you know, you're ready for... I like to do that a lot uh, back when I painted more. In the fall, in the last couple of good days, I'd prime up a whole bunch of stuff, so I was good through the whole winter. Um, now, of course, stuff will come out you want to do, and you can still, you know, use the hand prime stuff here or there, but... I see Legionnaires says he's using the Liquitex gesso, and that's that's funny because uh, years and years ago, when I first thought about, you know, brush brush on priming, and all that they had for that was the GW Smelly Primer. Oh, ho, ho, it's not about <laughs> Smelly Primer much. It doesn't work so, on not metal. Back then, I was uh, I did try the gesso. And and I found that it, it kind of peeled a bit. Like like if I was priming or priming and then I went over the same spot I already primed, it would slough off somehow and, and get some weird there were some weird things going on with it. At first I liked it. I thought it was cool, but and I don't know if it was because I was doing plastic versus metal. I don't know. It was so long ago, but yeah, I did try using gesso, and and uh, then I discovered the Vallejo surface primers, and that was the the. But now I have the Steinal Res stuff, and I picked that up at at Adepticon and some of the other conventions I do. So I uh, I don't go without, and yeah, it's it, just kind of slowly replaced my my Vallejo. Fair enough. Uh, Jason on Facebook said he tried uh, gesso at well, as well, but it seemed to soak up paint and make everything darker. Um, oh, oh well, I'm gesso for uh, you know when you're doing a canvas, the uh, the whole thing with gesso is to provide tooth and to get mm -hmm. it so that the uh, the paint kind of soaks into it and holds. I mean, its intended surface is canvas, really. Or, uh, Come know, on, we're miniature gamers. We'll use paper. anything we can. <laughs> Especially if it's cheap. So, yeah, I could see it maybe making the, the paint look a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. Almost like how if you lick a rock, you know? No, it dark, I, what, it the, what do you mean lick a rock? Who, who the, are you high, Kathy? Can you seriously not remember your childhood? Who has not licked a rock in their childhood? Do you know how old he is? Yeah, I'm oh. old. I'm like if dirt. They, I mean, I'm not saying dinosaurs roamed the earth, but... They had rocks back then. <laughs> and we didn't remember it. <laughs> Someone told me memory is the first thing to go. Raise Who's your hands, it? people, if you've licked a rock in your youth. I'm sure yeah. I have, but I mean, we're, we're talking about adults now. So? so? She's just making a point. I forget what that point was, but there was a point there. I was observing <laughs> nature. <laughs> and you licked a rock. And how when when you lick a rock, it's darker than when it's dry. And I'm thinking that gesso kind of, you know, when you apply the paint to the gesso, it kind of does a similar thing. Yeah. That, that actually That's makes all, sense. Yeah. Forest. <laughs> Forest. And then Gonzo Forest. was all trying to make me feel weird about licking rocks. <laughs> I'm just like, licking rocks? What the hell? Remember licking rocks? I'm sure I did. I was a strange kid. I mean, I Ask still am. your mom. She'll remember. I don't talk to my mom anymore. Oh. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got our miniature primed, and everything's looking good, and we're let it dry, and we're ready to start painting. What are the things we have to worry about whenever it comes to painting and the cold temperature? Of course, I'm sure nobody is outside on their back patio. I was going to say, find a warm place to paint. So that actually does pose another problem, though. If your painting area is near where the heat comes in, that heat is going to be dry, and it is going to dry out your paints faster. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So you're going to need to keep that in mind. You probably don't want to store your paints there. Trust me, this is from experience. Oh, uh, my, my goodness. Apartment. How warm was it getting? Were you storing no, it's your just paint? That it's just that where it was, the vent was right there, so it went over the painting area, so the painting area was the warmest place, and it spread out from there, but it would just go over there, so a lot of paints would dry out faster. You mean like on the palette? On the palette, in the pots. GW old pots were not good. That's true. 
you know, any power, like, I hate to say this, but anything that's not a really well sealed pot, so not dropper bottle mostly, they dry out a little easier and you got to be careful with that. Um, so even if you're going to paint in that nice warm spot, maybe don't hide your, keep your stuff in that warm spot. Maybe keep it in a different spot that's a little more temperate. Yeah. And uh, keep that in mind if you if you're gonna your palette's gonna dry a little faster because of the temperature there and the heat you know the heat flowing over you, uh, be ready to rewet stuff to keep it going or, or work in smaller amounts of paint so that you don't have to worry as much. You do a little bit, you get it done. Do a little bit more, get it going. Uh, a wet palette should solve that, but since I never ever used a wet palette in that particular apartment, I could not tell you for sure. You know, I have a wet palette. I still haven't even used that thing. Guess I need so, to pull that out. As the least painting person on this podcast, you should be using a wet palette, because I do. <laughs> it changes a lot of things. As the most painting person that I know, um, my husband does not use a wet palette, ever. Yeah, but your husband paints so fast that it's like the paint doesn't even have a chance to come out of the bottle before it's on the model. <laughs> I've watched him paint. He, he helped me go for my 24-hour, you know, charity event, and he had a model painted to, you know, Golden Demon standard in like 10 minutes, and I was just now getting paint out of my bottle. So, uh, so he's like from the David Taylor School of temp- painting. He's amazing. Um, but yeah, John does make a good valid point because I actually have a space eater. Because my uh, hobby desk, it's not at a window, but it's near a window. And, of course, you know, even though we have good insulation, it's still going to have a little bit of cool coolness from that area. And so I put a space heater underneath me uh, to keep my tootsies warm. And, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, so you can definitely tell a difference that mm-hmm. it uh, definitely warms up and the paint dries out a whole <coughs> lot quicker. Mm-hmm. And it's not a huge problem. Like you painting out of the pot probably makes it less a huge problem. Just means you need to rewet your brush and get some more paint more often than you would in uh, more temperate months. But you know, it's something you need to be aware of. You'll learn your environments. Just uh, if you're painting a new environment, be careful. You know, your first time in a winter somewhere, be be careful. Legionnaires says wet palettes are like holy texts. <laughs> I need to use it, but. I'm a bad, bad Do we need to send you one, Gonzo? I have one, but I haven't used it. Like I said, I'm a bad painter. The heaviest I ever. I have one and haven't used it. I gotta figure out. That's fine. It's okay. Whatever works for you. I need. Oh, we should paint shame him. Paint shame me. We should never paint shame everyone ever. Yeah. Dang it. Okay. Thought I was gonna get away with something. Oh, so everyone's painting. They're deep in it. We're deep in our paint. Deep in our paint. Well, so if what you're working on something about? while we're doing the podcast, let us know. Send us a little message. You know, say something. Check. We like to know what people are working yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. What are you yeah. working on while you have us going in the background? Yeah. But uh, what other problems do you guys find during the winter months? Uh, uh, stuff. I mean, hobby wise, I do notice uh, putty is a little more interesting to work with. The same reason for paint dries out a it, little quicker. It seems uh, a bit stiffer too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I, besides the drying out, uh, also my skin, um, because it is a, you know, a hotter environment, my skin gets really dry. And so of course I'm licking paint and my brushes, which I'm not supposed to do, but, uh, I do notice that, you know, it is a a bit of a problem with my hands and my skin is really, really dry, and so I get, like, really cracked skin, especially trying to work in certain... And holding a paintbrush, you know, in my hand with a pencil and stuff with all the heat, um, I do have an issue with that, but that's just kind of maybe me. So, two options. One would be the Blue Glove of Love. Yep. Or uh, just find a good moisturizer. you got to find one that's not too oily or anything, make those things slippery, and uh, it help you out. And honestly, we're, we're talking about some stuff that generally, like Gonzo's dry hands and all, it's not going to matter a lot. He's not trying to paint Golden Demon quantity. But if you're ever trying to level up your painting, that's a thing you got to look at. One of the things that can 
retard your the drying of your paint is to use uh, like the Vallejo glaze medium. Mm -hmm. I mean, it isn't enough necessarily just to throw a little extra water in your paint to thin it down because that also breaks up the the pigment of the paint as well. But Vallejo glaze medium will thin it down, and you can even make your own washes with the uh, the glaze medium. Mm -hmm which I find to be handy, but it doesn't break up the pigment. So, and it retards the drying time of your paint. So yeah, if it, you don't it. have a wet palette, go ahead and do that. I have discovered though, with my wet palette, I can't, I can't use the glaze medium because it thins it too much and uh, the water from the palette absorbs through the paper, yes. making it even more thin. So another good note is that what you'd want to do is you'd actually put that on your regular palette Mm -hmm. um, uh, which or you could do ways. you could do like me and have uh, a bunch of bottle caps sitting on your palette like when I do <laughs> washes I have I, I save bottle caps from water bottles and soda bottles and juice bottles and milk bottles <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and all the bottles and, yeah and uh, so if I'm doing washes or if I'm priming I have <clears throat> I have some that I just use all the time for you can see different layers of primer in this one. It just, why not? Instead of pouring it flat out onto the palette and having it run into all the Everything. corners. <laughs> it's another good note while we're on the wet palette. Flat. Keep it flat and level. Trust yeah. me. And what? I still, so mine kind of is, is concave, convex. It's one of those cons you know where there's Not like communist. a rise in the middle and it goes down towards the edges so occasionally if you know if my sponge is too wet and i close it at night the the paint will just sort of run towards the edges yeah you'd want to definitely work on that mm -hmm. uh yeah dimple palettes are really good i've got uh, a couple different ones um, you should have them around. I mean, there's a lot of little painting stuff that does, none of them are expensive that'll help you a little bit. Um, most of those little, uh, you know, paint palettes you can get at a, you know, any sort of hobby store like that, any sort of, you know, craft store, and they are not expensive at all. They also have uh, tablets of disposable palette paper, like hmm. uh, Strathmore palette paper, Canson palette paper. And what it is is just a tablet of paper, and and it's it's kind of like a wax paper, but not. And it's meant to be used for you know acrylics, watercolors, whatever. And uh, that's what I used to use. That's what Jim uses still, uh, instead of the wet palette. And using those, using the glaze medium, works really well. And I still would use my uh, my bottle caps for when I'm doing washes and stuff. And then. The, the great thing about that versus a dimple palette, which is also an awesome invention, um, is that I can just throw my bottle caps away when they're done. I don't have to worry about cleaning them out. I mean, you would have thrown it away anyways. So, because it's yeah, a bottle but a, cap. But a good palette's reusable. Just don't use a brush that scratches the surface. Use something that uh, uh, let it soak for a bit. If your paint gets dried in there, let it get broken up. Don't... Uh, don't scratch the surface because then oh, it gets... Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Acrylic paint, if you soak it, it just sloughs off. But don't put it down your drain because it's like, you know, putting vinyl down your drain. Indeed. Um, quick, then, uh, quick question, John. Um, yesterday, uh, last time we were on, we were talking about paint. And you said there was a... Not paint, a glue that you wanted me to try. And I tried trying to find it because I couldn't find it. And you said it had a brush on it. Uh, what glue were you talking about? Sorry to break what we are talking about, but it was just on my mind. Gorilla glue. Brush and nozzle. Let me see. Show it, show it up to me on the camera. Right here. Oh, I tried that, and I tried the brush, and the brush kind of hardened up into a big old clump. That means with. that it was, it was not sealed right. Okay. Because I've been using mine for weeks now, and I'm open up here, and it is still drippy. Okay. In fact, that's the biggest problem is you have to make sure when you pull it out, you, you wipe some of it off because you get a whole big bunch. But then yeah. it also has nozzle at the top. Works pretty well. Uh, 
But I find I go more and more to the brush, especially if I can easily brush off the sides and it's a big area or even a medium sized area. Uh, it works super well. Um, I honestly love freaking uh, Gorilla Glue in general. And then uh, L. Marshall's uh, wife found that. And then whew, that was a revelation because that, that brush makes certain things gluing a lot easier. Uh, can cap. Coaching paint tester of the galaxy. All right, cool. Let's try to keep up on the the comments there. Yeah, cause I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, Jason uh, Henley is also saying that ceramic wells are nice. They're hard to scratch. If you soak them with water, they come really mm -hmm. clean. Yeah, actually, uh, the uh, games workshop stores used to use just big ceramic tiles. Yeah. And yep. generally, the the as long as you don't go to the absolute edge, the paint just stays in a little area, mm -hmm. and it cleans really easily. Doesn't scratch well. Um, yeah, I, I recommend that. Um, again, you need to be on a flat surface. The, uh, the one with the wells is better if you're going to have any sort of not flat surface just because it'll stay in there better. Yeah. Excuse me. Speaking of it being winter and dry, I am in my wet palette and I mixed a little bit of paint here uh, so that I could highlight some stuff. And while I was talking... And typing in the chat, it dried. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> and then I think going to the uh, the finishing of a model, sealing and all that, that's where winter can really kick your ass. The good old oh, frosting. Oh, yeah, the clear coat. Cause that's a if, sad, sad thing. If spray primer is finicky, you know, spray on uh, varnish said, hold my beer, I'll show you something. I will really fuck your life up. Yep, I brush on everything. I know it's a pain in the ass, but that's what I do too. I use the uh, the Army Painter. I just have this stuff all next to me. The Army Painter Anti Shine Matte Varnish is oh. like the most matte of all of the things I've tried for brushing oh. on uh, clear coat. It's funny that uh, I use testers and or testers. Uh, I use Vallejo and. Uh, Manith John and I used to both, we would use several drops of the regular, then one drop of the uh, the shiny, just to get a good uh, sort of satin finish, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been enjoying that on models. It is a pain when you get to a larger model, but I mean, it's better than potentially frosting. There are ways to clear off frosting, but all of them are a pain in the ass, and you don't want to go for that. See, I'm so, an old tester's dull coat. Oh, Tester's Doll Coat is the shiz, but yeah. you would probably want to wait till spring to use that. See, I, I, says, I usually, whenever my winter, come, winter months come up, I do everything in my garage. It's not heated, but it's not as cold and I'm not out there as long type yeah, thing. Yeah, but it's another one where you just don't, do you really want to chance it? Yep. Yeah, I mean, if you got to, you got to. Um, uh, like when I paint night, that's probably next on my list to start painting an Imperial Night. I might just get you know, testers, uh, dull coat and go with that because brushing on an entire night seems like a pain in my ass. That's what we use for vehicles and large models. <laughs> yeah. It just seems like brushing it on in that case. I mean, I got a tank brush or two, but I choose life. <laughs> well, you know, fingers crossed. We haven't had a problem, but we have the ventilator downstairs. We have that ventilation hood. Uh, oh, right. so Jim just does that for the occasional, giant creature i'd have to do it out on the deck in the back and uh yeah not not right now uh <laughs> scotty buddy says that rustoleum to seal models he uses it in wisconsin winters and leave it to set in the garage this is amazing stuff yeah that's probably one of those things but uh i will recommend in any case when you start using a new sealer test, test it, it first yeah get a model that you don't care about as much test it out talk to some people who know hit up all your favorite experts uh, and and see how it works because uh, they all work a little differently, and you and you don't want to fuck around with that stuff. Mm -hmm. You paint the perfect model and then seal it horribly, horribly you're just gonna be so irate. It is is a terrible, terrible feeling. I had uh, one of our old uh, the old uh, bunker manager from uh, the Glen Burnie bunker, John Connor, painted up an Imperial Guard army in like I want to say twelve minutes flat. Then went to seal it, and it just all frosted the entire thing. Yeah. Was, That's got to be. I, I have heard that horror story so many times. Yeah, probably that exact horror story. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. 
but yeah, that's it was terrible because he he painted it up. It was a great standard, painted it quick, and then it's like boom, frosted. I'm like shit. Yeah. And uh, that was one of the common on the phone with GW was one of the common things like, hey, my model frosted. What do I do? And so what do you do? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. So, what can you do? We were not permitted to give out any actual answers because none of them are proven to work. And all of them could also hurt your model. Yes, there is that. Or waste your time, or worse. So, one idea is to wait and try another light coat afterwards. Sometimes that is supposed to clear it up. I've done that before. And and it does, but it is very finicky. Yes. Uh, The other one is to get a soft bristle brush, like an old toothbrush or something you're not going to use for your teeth ever again. And some warm soapy water and scrub that shit off. Takes a while, but you'll get it off. You might have to repaint a little bit here or there, and then you can seal it again. Okay. What else? Uh, Those are it. There's no other options that we've ever heard that have any reliable results. I have heard, and I just saw this recently on one of the painting uh, Facebook pages that I'm on, uh, someone using vegetable oil. I've heard and that r- too. R- rubbing vegetable all over. I've never like, heard that one. I don't know how you clean it off after that. Like if you have to take rubbing alcohol, but rubbing alcohol would also have a chance of taking the paint, paint off, off too. Yeah. As well. Well, if the sealant worked, the rubbing alcohol shouldn't take the paint off. But you may be rubbing the sealant oh, yeah. off. That, so that's probably what the the concept behind that is. Yeah, that would be the other uh, the other thing I would you know would mention is that. Uh, that's a new one. We hadn't heard it, and we would recommend that because, I mean, you could very much rub the paint off your model. Yeah, I don't know how that was supposed to work, but I have heard uh, several people talk about that. Hopefully, hey, uh, a cop says oil does not work. He's tried it. He's tried it. <laughs> okay. So maybe someone just had a lucky thing. Maybe it was a different problem, not the normal one. So we'll oh, see. Oh, sure. But that's why you guys reach out to everyone. Reach out to your experts. Ask them, and, and they'll... They'll bring the network in, and you'll find the answer. Because we all know we all want to help everyone uh, get the answer with painting stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, that that thankfully is not something that I've had to to deal with. Thank goodness. Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> is this wood? I think this is wood. Your head? No, that's not wood. That's stone. Trust stone. me. So, um, but if you can, and if you have to do any of this stuff indoors, please have good ventilation, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'll tell you right now, one time, long, 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 long ago, I decided it was way too cold. So I'm like, Tell us the story, Grandpa Gonzo. Grandpa Gonzo, I'm sorry. Uh, I decided I was going to seal a model and I was like, oh, it's way too cold. I know I'm not supposed to do this outside. So I decided, oh, I'll go to the bathroom, turn on the little vent, seal up a few models, and holy hell, the house was horribly smelled. Because it doesn't just stay in the bathroom when the vent is on, it goes all over the house because you open the door to leave. And then it just goes everywhere. And so your house smells like primant or sealer or whatever. Yeah. Though I've heard people doing it, I just would not suggest it. You you can wait. Yeah. Wait for a good day. If you're home on a weekend day and it gets a nice solid temperature at around noon or wherever the sun's at its peak or right after that, and you'd be like, this is not bad, you can give it a shot then. Or maybe just wait. But, you know, put your model aside on your display case or wherever you have that not in the case because putting the model in the case without sealing, it could still be a little... Could get roughed up a little bit, and let it wait till the spring. I mean, we're not known for being very patient as a group, but sometimes you need to be. So a little bit. I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> being wait. patient, yeah, wait. Wait. wait, wait. You're in a different position, Kathy. You 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 have a time frame, <laughs> yes. and if you have a tournament, maybe a time frame. You're gonna have to find a way around it. Maybe. Uh-huh. Maybe some maybe some places got it. I know some stores very rarely have priming or whatever booths, whatever. Um, but you know, if you got to do it, like I said, wait till that warm day 
if it's warm and you got a chance to go out and do it, try and go take care of it. But don't do it in your house. It's not worth it. Not unless you got the best ventilation ever. And I mean more than one of those airbrush hoods. That airbrush hood is not going to do it. I mean, it would help, but it's just not going to do it. It's not going to be enough. Unless you have like a specific one. I've seen uh, when I was doing some hobby hangouts a long time ago. Um, did it with some people and they had their own um, hoods in their basement that led directly out with a fan going outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I so, was yeah. like, that's pretty sweet. So some of those things have things where they fit in the window and you they just take it right out. How's take it, it right again? out. How's it go again? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right That's cool. Okay. Right out the window. Right, right out, out the, the window. Off. When you put a fan behind you, it could you that could work, but you'll want to try it and you'll want to try it in small quantities to make sure that it works first. Like any good engineer, test that shit first. <laughs> oh my gosh. But uh, so there you go. I think uh, that covered start to finish, what? more or less. More or less. Kathy, what are these miniature? What is the miniature that you're working on exactly? Is it for something like a game? Uh, is this one of your um, this is commission the Redbox Games one, and it is a commission piece. Gotcha. It's uh, because I know you I like Gobbo, so that's what I was it's wondering. The goblin. Um, Kathy likes goblins. What? What? I do. I can't wait. I've been having a lot of fun ones. with these. Uh, it's, they're not as characterful as the ones I was working on before. Well, so these, I'll show you a couple of these. These ones look uh, a little stiff. I don't know who makes them again. They were just ones that were sent to me. Those, um, are, those are solid models. They're, they're neat. They're That's neat. Right, yeah. But they're not quite as whimsical as the uh, other, except for this guy. This guy cracks me up. He's got the beaky helmet. <laughs> I mean... I'll be honest, they're good, and a couple, like a month ago, they'd be great, but GW just, when they oh, dropped the, their new the goblin. Uh, oh. Boomspite goblins? Yeah. Yeah, those look nice. I only slightly regret getting rid of my goblins. I wouldn't want to rebase and all that shit, all my goblins, so I don't really regret it. But I a little bit regret it. I'll tell you, some of that stuff looks really cool, and the rules seem like fun as hell. Uh, uh, I just want to know if you can field all trolls. If you can field all trolls, it's on like Donkey Kong. Oh, I'm sure there's a... Even mostly trolls. If I can have a couple tiny units of cool-looking goblins and trolls, I would consider that. Because, uh, trolls. I mean, trolls? Trolls. Hey, uh, guess what border army I played when I played Lord of the Rings, Gonzo? Uh, trolls? Trolls! Go Goddamn right! Goblins! Goblins! My <laughs> goblins had trolls. They also had a Balrog, so... I did not have a bar log. I just had trolls. I love my bar log. I need to paint that up too. Which I've been, uh, I did notice that, um, you know, the GW stuff, they're bringing out a lot more um, Lord of the Rings stuff. They're really kind of pushing that pretty hard, which I think is great because it's actually yeah. a decent, fun game. To be honest, they probably just re upped the license recently. Most likely. You don't put that out if you just didn't have a license. Uh, so also no, noting that the uh, uh, Fancy Flight also has a partial license. They have another Lord of the Rings board game a thing coming out. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Uh, oh, my. So, also, since we're talking about that, also, uh, rest in peace, Rune Wars. Oh, did they get canceled or whatever? They canceled their... Um, uh, canceled their uh, support for it. Their... Uh, tournaments and uh organized play that's oh gotcha word. almost like i've been drinking almost like you've had alcohol no that's system. impossible no, but yeah that's... so they canceled organized play so they're pretty much gone unfortunately that kind of stinks that's some decent de decent neat little miniatures i mean it's it's not dead dead and actually uh, so there's a guy on youtube named Krabak who covers mostly ffg stuff he's an interesting dude he says cool stuff um but he's also a very weird dude but you know is what it is, and he made a good point. It's not dead. You can still play it. They can still put out whatever they want for it. It's just no more organized play. Gotcha. It likely means you won't see a lot of support for it, but you never know. Yeah. Uh, it was a very weird system, and I don't think people ever got behind the trays on it. 
No. And also, unfortunately, it came out right as Age of Sigmar just turned it all around and, and came back in, and it's <laughs> really hard to uh, really hard to compete with the uh, the big dog on the block. What? Yeah, I know. No. No, no, I did not say Netrunner. I said. <laughs> I mean, Netrunner probably too. Well, Netrunner is, yeah, they're not, that's not anymore. Not, but not it's weird. funny, funny that he would mention Netrunner though, because I did just see that uh, it's, they've come out with a book called Android Shadow of the Beanstalk. Isn't God that... knows what that's, you know, but it takes place in that world, the, the Netrunner. I'm pretty world. sure that's the next world book for, um, for Genesis. Genesis. Yeah. Yes, it looks so oh, is fun. It? We were yeah. playing, we were playing this Android board game, which is so convoluted. It took us like three hours to read through the rules and set it up so that oh, we yeah. could figure out what was going on. But it was so rich in all of the, the depth of the story and the characters and everything. I was like, man, I wish they would do this for a, a role playing game because it would be so much fun. It seems like a really interesting world, and then I saw this, and I was like, "And it's based, based in that, like that would be so cool to play." Oh, I know that yeah, well, that Android ro- board game because I own that one, and holy crap, it takes forever to set that thing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to. I want to take a look at the setting. I've heard the 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 blurb on it makes it sound like it may not be what I'm looking for. It makes it sound like you're a regular dude in the Android world, and uh, you know what? I'm a regular dude every other day. I don't want to be a regular dude when I sit down to role play. <laughs> right, right. What? Yeah. Sorry. It's gold. But in any case, uh, a lot of interesting stuff there. Um, so, what what is this the the Genesis system? Is it? I mean, I'm sorry. I was kind of. That's not what I'm looking for. Damn it. Not paying attention. Not paying attention too much because I'm trying to paint too. I'm trying to get this stuff done for people. Um, it is you said it was beanstalk, so you're shadows of the be- shadow of the beanstalk. <laughs> I, I don't really know what that's supposed to mean. Oh shit! But it's in that it's in that world and beanstalk love... like Jack and the Beanstalk. I don't know. Oh gosh, got me all flabbergasted because I'm like, what? Definitely a Genesis. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would say it looks like maybe not so much what I was thinking about. Um, yeah, it looks like it's more of a standard, uh, you know, cyberpunky style game, which is good because I was a little yeah. worried about that. But this looks interesting. There's a, a preview up on the FFG page if anyone's interested in seeing it. That's cool. I figured if it was in the same universe as the, uh, you know, the board game and the card game, then it would. <clears throat> one would hope, but you never interesting. know. Interesting. Yeah, you don't know, but I would like to find out more. Yeah, absolutely. Would you, would like, you to like to know, know more? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know that movie, you're missing out on a classic. Yeah, so, yeah, interesting there. Um, other than that news, let's see, is there any other news I can bring up? Um, is there any other news? Uh, there wasn't a lot out. I mean, uh, F- I mean, I guess uh, Perpetual Press just uh, did prices for the uh, and and dates, I think, for the Steelhead. Uh, yep. Uh, weapons. The new CID rules for, of course, uh, Grimkin came out. Grimkin went live, yeah. Yeah, which I'm testing I didn't, out. I didn't. Uh, I didn't make a podcast on that because I don't care about Grimkin rules. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I'm looking <laughs> into it because, of course, I play Grimkin and was. Uh, Maybe you should record a podcast about it. I can't do that. I have too many podcasts I do already, so I mean, I just have to like go with it. <laughs> Don't say. <laughs> <laughs> but um, did test out some of that stuff, and I, I like the new Grimkin stuff they got coming out. Uh, there's some really cool things going for it. Yeah. Um, I hope that it does really, really well, and I can't wait to see the next iteration, I guess you could say, uh, because... As we all know, the first set of rules are the, hey, test this out. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah, that's not going to work, guys. Try this instead. Um, yeah, that's just sort of how playtesting goes. Yeah. And so Trust I'm not putting too much stock in it. Just enough to go, I see where they're going with this, and I like yeah. it. Yeah. Actually, what I really like about the CID, to get on that for a little bit, I like how they don't hesitate to put their thoughts on where they want, what they want the unit's concept to be. 
when you're looking at it or, or if they're like hey we know you all want us to take this away from the unit but that's our thing for this unit deal with it and that's that's good because you need to know that as a tester yeah. if you know this is not going to change you can go all right well how do we balance it based around that yeah because mm-hmm. uh, like a few things that i looked at uh of course from a tournament standpoint that the grave ghoul which is a model that can help out and it's a support piece mm-hmm. um requires you to have corpses on him so he can do the things he wants to do and i find that a problem for the simple That's fact that is you have to have corpses. Yeah, you can't guarantee that. Yeah. It's like he could go the entire game and not use his abilities because he can't get a corpse. Yeah, uh, that's not good. You got to you got to find some way to deal with that. You yeah. you want the abilities to be used. Yeah. So, and then the they have the new piggy piggyback UA and I was like, uh oh yeah, I need more from the piggybacks. Oh. Hold on. I need to uh you need a rep for Merc players everywhere. What? You got a piggyback UA? They've been out for like 12 seconds? We ain't got a steelhead UA yet? <laughs> All right, I'm done. I actually don't care that much. But, yeah. but I mean, there was just certain things. I was like, oh, I probably wouldn't use that. I probably wouldn't do that. Probably wouldn't do much with this and much with that. Um, yeah. All the other pieces, I like and I definitely would use and continue to use because of what they do and... Uh, I've already put all of them in every one of my lists. I think Lord, uh, what is it, Lord Long Tongue or so, whatever the frog guy, Lord of Warts. I can't remember his full name. Uh, I like what he does. I would put him with every single caster because he creates a cloud and is a spell slave and does a bunch of good stuff. He's definitely See, worth it. See, that's a good thing to put because you put, I would take my original caster. That means he may be too good. Mm-hmm. And that's something you have to find out. Just yep. balancing stuff is so hard, guys. Yeah. Like it's why I don't really get upset with them when they can't necessarily balance everything because it's it's really hard, especially with. It's easier in conver- in convergence and uh, uh, with Grimkin and the new one. My brain, Crucible uh, Guard. Crucible Guard. Because there's less models. Correct. The more models you get, the harder it is because you break one, and I think that's sort of what happened to with Mark three is they'd fix one thing and not see how it broke another thing. Correct. Mm-hmm. What could be? This is hard. It takes a lot of time and it's hard to do all at once. Yeah. So, uh, I was really surprised that they didn't do any legacy models, which I thought was interesting because, you know, a lot of people complain, well, this isn't being played, AKA piggybacks, not being played, a bump list, not being played. And they decided not to touch any legacy models. Interesting. We'll see how it works. Well, okay, yeah. It's I mean, a non-player. What's the legacy model? Uh, oh, it's a model already in play, already already out. They're just testing okay. new models, correct? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, legacy models means that it's already on the shelf. It's already done. Nothing's changing. They're only yeah. testing out the stuff they plan on bringing out soon. So to be fair, that with something like Grimkin, I would do it that way because a they're very new, and b you're not going to get another CID for them for, for maybe ever. Yeah. Because they might not ever add more models to it. That's always a possibility with a limited faction. Yeah. So they'd like to save that so they can get some more excitement for them at a later date when they feel like they really need to change it. Yeah. And also I like them not going too far into legacy models because uh, aside from the not using them point, if something's a little overpowered, maybe the meta will shift and it'll change. So yeah. that, that's always a possibility. I'm finding a lot of that in uh, Legion where, where our local meta is shifting a little bit. And, uh, you know, I got to change my list. You know, we went to no vehicles at all. And then uh, Bowie, uh, you know, not this past Friday, but the game we played before that brought an ATST. And I'm like, well, fuck, what am I going to do about that? <laughs> I was not expecting that thing. <laughs> I was not expecting a walker to come in and stomp my ass. That's awesome. To be fair, the answer was unfortunately roll really, really good dice. But you can't rely on that shit. <laughs> what? No. Yeah, but you know it's cool. It's your your own local meta means a lot for that, and, and the I feel like we all should be more worried about our local meta than any national meta. Yeah. Uh, to go on a tiny rant, we don't have a lot of time for the mini section, but don't worry about what's doing well anywhere. Someone actually posted. Uh, it was like X Wing. Oh, uh, what did win such and such? And I was wanted to post like, who fucking cares? Just play in your local stuff. Yeah. What do you want to play? What do you think is going to win? Do your own thing. Uh, your unless own thing. you're traveling to do uh, you're traveling. those other people. 
be the dark horse. The, being the dark horse is the best. You know, whenever I go to a tournament and I drop down, you know, Mercs, they want to be like, oh, let's put the sucker against the Merc player from our team because uh, that's the easy win. And I would crush some poor fool because they're expecting a chump because I'm playing Mercs and I'm not a chump. I actually fucking know how to play and I know how to play my models very well and I know how my shit works. You know, you, you get that. It's being the dark horse is fun. People discount you. People, you know, part of this game is just getting in the mind of someone, knowing what they're going to do and affecting them. If you That's can what surprise Jim them says all the time, yeah, if you surprise <laughs> them and make them play your game rather than their game, getting that initiative is great. And also, it's fun for both players to a point. Like the, the guy losing isn't going to reacting isn't going to like it as much because he has to get out of his game, but it helps him think, and he'll look back and like, that is, that was fun. Because he had to think. He had to go outside his comfort zone. Um, and I think we all need more of that. Rant over. Rant off. Totally agree. All right. What time is it? We at our 8.30 mark? Oh, yeah. We're at 8.30? What? <laughs> we're, we're, Wait, what? Mark. 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 8 o'clock Central Crazy Time. All right, let's go to our media section. For anybody that know, uh, we always do 30 minutes of media where we talk about some random bullshit of stuff. Um, I mean, it's you, not utterly random bullshit of stuff. It's, it's <laughs> reviews of media that we've consumed during the week. During the week? Shit. I don't know. Um, I don't have very many to go with uh, this what? week. I know. You know what? Neither do I this week. What? Yeah. Okay, one of those actually surprised. The other one's not really a surprise. Sorry, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's okay. You, you spend all your time doing other stuff, which is fair. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to get this la I'm trying to get this wash on my model because I want to get a good middle wash on this thing before we get started. Um, I have, I think, three things to talk about. I have uh, one. One. It's a doozy. Oh, so it's going to be a long rant? Uh, I It could be. I might also just say fuck it and give a rating in the middle because, <laughs> oh my god, I ranted while I was watching it. Oh my. Oh, so you did You did a Kathy with uh, Masters of the Universe, which, by the way, they're remaking. <laughs> oh, are they? Okay. Yeah, I saw a thing that they're remaking. It's after they heard my review, they decided they would remake. Are they going to get Chris, Chris Hemsworth to play uh, He-Man? I'm down. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, I love Dolph Lundgren. Don't get me wrong. I love Dolph Lundgren. He amuses the crap out of me. Um, Just Chris not Hemsworth. as He-Man. Chris Hemsworth is... Actually, I actually love him as He-Man. He was fine. He's not the problem with that movie. There's a lot of them. He's not one. <laughs> he's, not the, he's not the main problem with that movie. Oh, that movie. Anyways, yeah, so I have one, uh, but you should probably go first, Gonzo. Um, so I decided to watch some more anime. Uh, if anybody that didn't watch uh, last week's episode or listen to last week's episode, <laughs> I had a huge rant about anime, uh, about how, you know, everything's just about boobs and ass and, you know, fan sub stuff. And I'm like, I had an anime and I was watching it and it's a an about, anime about a high school gaming group. Um, they all like games, blah, blah, blah. And of course, being at high school, there's got this, you know, the little love triangles and it's okay. I mean, it's nice. It's got good characters, stories, decent, blah, blah, blah. And I'm coming to like the final episodes, still enjoying it. They talk about some stuff. There's still some of your bullshit about, you know, you know, I like playing this anime because this, I like trying to get this, you know, character in bed and you know, it's a dating sim and I'm like, okay, they're talking about dating sims. Gotcha. Um, I, I know, Bowie, right? Um, and so it, it was actually pretty good. It's called Gamers. Uh, it's about a high school, and it does have the love relationship thing, but it's it's okay. I, I knew what I was getting into coming into a uh, high school gaming, you know, anime. Um, and so I'm okay with it. Not a problem. It, it, it's good background noise. It, it's good things as I'm working on applications and working on files for the convention and stuff. And uh, so the last episode's on. I'm like, cool. Uh, last episode of the season. And it was hilarious because it was about them talking about DLCs for video games. Um, which I think is a 
pretty cool topic for them to cover on it. And they brought up some really good points about, you know, why they do this and, you know, why would you buy a DLC? They're just trying to take your money, blah, 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 blah. And everybody knows this. We all know this stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with it. Everything's going great. Still enjoying it. Um, they crack jokes at stuff and one of the girls gets really, really, um, all the other stuff going on and sorry, uh, something came through. I needed to look at, and they were giving each other crap. And then like the last scene of the entire season is three of the girls sitting in a hot spa, you know, talking about DLCs. And I'm like, really? And so every scene is, of course, a fan scene of them doing things and saying things. And all the scenes are position the camera like this and position the camera like that. And, oh, we turned just the right way so you can kind of get. And I'm like, oh, way to ruin the whole thing. And I was like, damn it. You got me all the way to the end of it and then screwed it up. Kind of took you out of the moment. Yeah. It was like, this is stupid. I was like, damn it, guys. Um, and then I went through a couple of other ones uh, where I, you know, removed him off the queue because it was like, oh, first episode. And it's nothing but anime boobs. I'm like, damn it. So... Rant on, rant off. I understand. I know what I'm getting into. But I was like 12 episodes and then they tried to do the fan stuff. I'm sorry. Air tank coming on. Um, and so I was just like really, really annoyed. So. And, uh, this has been Gonzo's Anime Corner. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just annoying. Um, so I did watch. Um, it's called Gamers. It wasn't bad until the final episode, and then I got really upset. What do you give so. it for rating? Um, up until that one episode, I would say probably about two Sperry Slurpees. Mm -hmm. And after that episode? I wouldn't watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How the mighty so. fall went from three to fuck this shit. <laughs> Yeah, it it just annoyed the crap out of me. I was annoyed. So. Oh my! Do you want to do another one? No, go for yours. I, I need to answer something real quick. Okay. Um. So I uh, realized I hadn't watched anything all this week, so I'm sitting down and we order food and uh, we watch a little bit of YouTube and I'm like, food gets here. I'm like, what do I watch? I'm like, oh cool, you know, Goldeneye's still on Amazon Prime. We go hit it, and it's not on Amazon Prime anymore. It would actually cost money. So I'm like. Well, shit. I guess Old that night changed. the James Bond? Yeah. Okay. I was going to watch a couple weeks ago, then something else came up, so I didn't. It was still sitting there, but I guess a couple weeks ago it was free, and now it's not. Aww. So I'm like, screw it, I'm going to watch a movie off my shelf. I need to get through all these movies anyways. I've still got a bunch. A bunch. I haven't watched that copy of, or in some cases at all. So I said, screw it, we're stuck. I'm going to make this uh, make this as painful as possible. So I grabbed the Transformers box set that Officer Rob bought oh, for me. No. And I watched the third Transformers movie, which I had not seen. This is sort of my opinion of that in general. There was a point, I don't know, kind of early on in the movie, since it's like two and a half hours long, where I literally stopped, got a bottle of alcohol, and had to do this. <laughs> Just to get through it. <laughs> so there you go. Um, God, should I do good and bad? Um, in any case, for Christ's sakes, when, how does the first movie so good and then everything afterwards just so fucking bad? How did this happen and how did it keep happening? I, I mean, the first movie, like, I liked Sam. His parents were kind of annoying, but they were used fairly sparsely. This one, they used sparsely, but they're more annoying every time they show up. Uh, with one exception, there's one little point towards the end where it was like, oh, that was okay, but it wasn't worth them in the entire movie. Um, God, what's his play? The guy who plays the sector, Section 7 guy who keeps showing back up, who's supposed to be funny, is only marginally funny, and only here... Uh, uh, Agent Simmons, he's actually in the movie maybe just about the right amount, but 
and better in this one than he was in the second one. But man, it's still just weird. And man, there's like ten plot lines going in this fucking movie. You Only don't ten? need ten plot lines. Why mm-hmm. don't you just do one or two well? Now, why don't you do one or two competently? Well, because Sam's trying to find a job. He can't find a job, even though he saved the world. And there's a good moment in that plot line where he's uh, with... Uh, who the hell is that guy? John Malkovich. Uh-huh. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm not going to be mailroom. I saved your life twice. I can't tell you how. I can't tell you where. I got a medal from Obama. I'm not working in the damn mailroom. <laughs> you know, but the way he said it, you're like, good job, Shia LaBeouf. You actually conveyed the right attitude at that one moment. The problem is the rest of it was written like a joke. Like he's a fucking incompetent and fucking ADD on Ritalin all the time guy. Worse, like worse than the first movie. That boy has a problem. There's a couple times we're just like, what the hell is, what the hell are you doing? And I don't want to blame Shia LaBeouf because I know he can actually act. I've seen him in movies where he actually acts quite well. I have to blame the director. It's got to be Michael Bay and Woo! It was not good. Um, God, his love interest is super hot, but she's mostly a damsel in distress. She has a couple moments in the end where she does decent stuff, but when you have, you know, 15 minutes of meaning, not even 15 minutes of, uh, of meaningful screen time in a two-hour and 30-minute movie, that's not good. The rest of the time, she's just a damsel in distress, and you're like, come on. Really? Uh, not good. The uh, God, the other human character, the other guy is really annoying and has a chance where he should be like, have that, oh my God, I gotta do the right thing moment. No, nope, he didn't do the right thing. He just gets clubbed in the face. Um, he was okay other than that, but just not good. And I think that storyline had some potential. The whole, you know, humans working for the Decepticons, you know, to try and be on the winning side was also interesting was an interesting plot line but they didn't do enough with it and then the whole moon thing interesting plot line but again it's just too sporadic um the action is fuck awful in most of it like there are a handful of times where you can see what's going on and it's good mostly those are the human military guys doing stuff because it's easier to film those than cgi i realize why michael bay uses so much goddamn slow-mo and bullet time that's the only way you can see what the fuck is going on in his action scenes. <laughs> and it's bad. Like, if I'd seen this maybe prior to, you know, something like John Wick or Fury Road, I might have been a little more lenient, but these are really bad. You don't see what's going on. The Transformers are all... If they're not hero Transformers, they're all just metal. There are times I'm like, is that... Who's that? Oh, he's got one eye. I guess that's Shockwave. I mean, come on. That's sort of the problem. You take guys who are so iconic and, and have a great look, and you make them all so generic. Literally, I don't even remember if the red car was supposed to be Sideswipe or not. They might have named him. I don't fucking remember. You know, Bumblebee is the only one who really, really looks like a car, even when he's in Transformer mode. And, you know, I like Bumblebee. He's cool. Yeah, I like Camaro Bumblebee. He's, it's, it's fine. It's just... Bad action, some terrible lines, some terrible acting, combined with some really, really good moments here or there. You know, each pretty much every character gets a really, really good moment or two in the movie. That's fine. Um, there is a good movie in there somewhere. But it'd take a much better director than fucking Michael Bay to tease that out of it and actually make something really worth a shit. Uh... I'm going to give this fucking... It's got... Uh, it's better than Beastmaster. Shut um, up. It is better than Beastmaster. <laughs> Beastmaster's just not good. Sorry. But I give it the same rating as Beastmaster because the bads are worse than Beastmaster and the betters are better than Beastmaster. So it is four shots of Kraken. Yeah, I'm using shots of Kraken because I had to drink that much during the fucking thing. I ran out of alcohol. I had to come up and get another bottle. <laughs> there you go. Um... I don't look forward to watching it again. I had the idea that I was going to, you know, for, for my Minis and Movies podcast, go, maybe I'll go through the Transformers movies in order. No, I, I don't think I want to subject myself to that. Not anytime soon. 
So there you go. Um, and yes, Jason, uh, Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime is awesome throughout the whole entire thing. Um, that's a bright spot in most of them. And uh, Bumblebee's supposed to be really good. I have to see it. We'll have to see if I get the time to. But there you go. Or shut to Kraken. <laughs> don't. Just don't. Just don't. I, I feel like four and five are a better idea. Watch Mark Wahlberg <laughs> jump into the Transformers universe and do his thing. It's better. Aside from one scene in the fourth one, I don't want to think about it ever again. Anyways, uh, Gonzo, please save me. Um, okay. Um, caught up on some TV shows. I watched the next episode. Excuse me, the next episode of Gotham, uh, which we could uh, uh, did a small review uh, last week. Uh, I'm still enjoying it. The characters are really good. Um, I I really really like it. I'm just waiting for a few things to happen. Um, for the people that are watching it, the um. The Riddler is kind of not within the story right now. He's got his own storyline, and it just feels disconnected. There, it's not connected to anything that's happening within the rest of Gotham. So it's kind of a weird distraction as I'm watching it. And I'm like, I don't care about his story. Don't care what's happening. Don't give a shit. Um, but everything else has been pretty good. Um, they did some strange things to <laughs> Selena Kyle. Uh, aka Catwoman, where they're doing some interesting thing with her in the last episode, uh, because she got shot and severed her spine or something like she she got really hurt and hadn't been able to do stuff, and so they've used some magic, I grew up quotations around that, um, because it's something from Poison Ivy, um, but it seems pretty interesting. Uh, I'll be glad when the series is over because we'll get somewhere with this. Um, they have teased. A few pictures of um, Bruce in a Batman-style costume. Uh, just kind of dark and mysterious because you see the cape and everything. So it'll be interesting to see where it finally goes once it's all done. Um, but I'm really liking it. But I've always liked Gotham anyway because it's just a new thing. and it It's fresh. How about that? Because I, I'm not looking. I'm like, oh, okay, this is the same boring shit. Um <laughs> They're, they're not afraid to kill people this season, which is cool, um, which is always good in my opinion when you're not afraid to um, take a chance and just off a character. Well, it's, it is a final season, so fuck them um, type thing. Um, let's see what else. Um, it, it's, it's been pretty decent. They've had some good stories that have been going on, uh, some side stories of how it happens. Uh, there's actually been some things that are relevant to what's happening today in our society uh, about things. So it was kind of like a, a poke and a jab at uh, the United States government. So I thought that was interesting. I uh, still love the characters. Going to hold off on a full review until uh, everything uh, gets done with the, the series. But overall, it was still a pretty good episode. I'll keep watching it, of course. Cool. Uh, Kathy, do you have anything at all? <laughs> So, yesterday when I went over to Jen's house, we sat on her new couch, and we binged one of her favorite shows, The Dead Files. And I've never watched a show like that before. It was on the Travel Channel, you know, one of those channels that used to be about something that it's not about anymore. You know, like travel, or uh, uh, <laughs> learning, or history. Uh, so the Travel Channel has a bunch of series about, uh, like, the supernatural. But not even, not like, you know, supernatural is in fiction and, oh my god, it's Sam and Dean and it's really fun. Why no, it's like, it, it's, it's like ghost hunter shows. Like, mm -hmm. and they take themselves seriously. Like, the what, so the Dead Files is the, it's this lady Amy and this guy who's a cop and they they go investigate these these people's houses for paranormal stuff the people are like oh yeah this is going on and this is going on and all I can think in my head is are you sure your kid's not just on drugs he's a teenager you know instead of demonic possession 
Like, maybe he's just on drugs, or maybe somebody is abusing him at school or something, and it's causing him to act out, like, rather than demonic possession. Well, I mean, demonic um, possession, I mean, I, an option, right? I <laughs> the whole time, but, but I, it was fun to watch it in a way where I was heckling it, oh. but I, I couldn't do it that much because I know that she utterly believes in that stuff. Ah, so you, you don't want to hurt your, your the other party's feelings, so you don't uh, full MST3K it. I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> only only what was funny is, in between our watching of the Dead Files, there was an advertisement for uh, episodes of The Ghost Hunters, <laughs> which is just another one where oh, yeah. these, like, four guys go out and, and do... But it was in Alton, Illinois. So, we're like, oh, it's in Illinois. Let's go. Let's, let's just see what they say. It's supposed to be the most haunted small town in America, right? Yep. Of course. <sighs> the most bullshit, bullshit, and bullshit. That's Ghost Hunters. Uh, so, yeah. So, she, who is who is a believer and likes this show, The Dead Files, they... They provide closure to people who believe that things are supernatural. Things are going on in their house, which is it, you know, whatever. Posed as a is it posed as a real life thing or is it actual? Thing? Oh yeah. No, no, it's it's, it's, it's like life. like real life. So, but the ghost hunters, even she was heckling. So I felt totally comfortable heckling the shit out of that one. Uh, cause those guys were just like, it was all Blair Witch Project. They were like wiggling the camera around and going, Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Oh my God. What was that? Oh my God. And then they had all these ridiculous animations in that particular one of, of stuff that they didn't film. They just like inserted it for a, you know, a jump scare. Uh, so yeah, that was my, uh, my yesterday. But there was pizza. There and Jen. So zero <laughs> space herpes for pizza and Jen and all the space herpes for the shows? Uh, all the space herpes ever for those shows. I just don't understand that. I'm, as a skeptic, as a complete skeptic, I, <laughs> I I'm not a skeptic. It. I'm a realist. If you present me with any sort of... Oh, sure. I'm concrete mysteries, I'll be like, oh, that's interesting. I, I have been in places... Where, just for no reason, my flight or flight, my fight or flight kicks in, and that is a disconcerting sensation. And until we can, you know, as a society, figure out what causes that, we're going to believe in haunting. I like to think it's just a temporary mental imbalance, just turns on your fight or flight, so you think it's a ghost. Mm -hmm. But I don't really know. I'm no expert. I just know well, that like anybody. Places. Anybody who has anxiety attacks, you know, that's mm -hmm. kind of the ultimate, like, fight or flight thing kicking yeah. in. And you're just, your body just kind of... Maybe it's just an anxiety attack. You just don't believe you have it. Like, I don't yeah. generally have them, but if I had one at that moment, maybe that's what it was. We're getting kind of deep for the media section. Gonzo, bring us back <laughs> up. <laughs> um, okay, so shows are coming back, of course, because the seasons are coming back. Because uh, it's coming around, and I've been watching uh, Nathan Fillion's uh, The Rookie. The Rookie. Oh yeah. Watch season one. It was good. It, it, it's it's a cop drama, but of course I love Nathan, so I'll watch anything at least give it a shot. Uh, and of course, last season left on a cliffhanger, so they got to settle that cliffhanger. Um, and there's your typical police love romance drama. Um, blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. It, it wasn't bad. There's nothing wrong with it. Didn't have an issue. Uh, with what was going on, um, it it was a good show. Uh, it's just really, really weird to see him do action the way he's doing it in here. Um, huh. He's taking it more serious. It's a more serious role, like different from Castle. Yeah, it, it definitely, um, definitely different from Castle because he still was a kind of a bumbling idiot in Castle. Oh yeah. Um, and this one, no, he's serious and he brings out some good points and you know. Good drama and stuff. It's good. Uh, one of the better cop shows out there because it's it's got some stuff going on and there's other different characters and they don't just highlight just him. So the other characters are in there and got some good story. It's been pretty good so far. I'm enjoying everything that's been going on. Um, it's shot really well. 
good acting, good lines, you know, you, you, you feel for the characters a little bit more, uh, and they're more relatable, of course, um, than everybody isn't like super, super pretty and super fit and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, <coughs> people, you know, they've got a wide, diverse cast. I mean, and Nathan Fillion isn't this, you know, rip stud. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it feels natural and comfortable is the best way to put it. Um, so I'm really liking it. Uh, season just started up. Um, gonna just, you know, go with the flow, watch it, finish it out. Uh, still a good thumbs up for right now till the season is over. I'll give a full review. I need to start watching some more TV stuff. Just since the TV's up and running, I can watch it after while I eat dinner. So that is good. Uh, maybe the flash or maybe I'll try something else. We'll see. I mean, there's there stuff my way I need to watch, but good Lord, there's too much. Yeah. There is a ton of stuff to watch. Uh, the other thing that came up was uh, we've been watching Blackish. Um, which oh, I is, like that show. Yeah, Blackish has always been good. It's always funny. It always tons and cheeks itself. It always, you know, you know, gives its own self hell and, you know, plays on all the stereotypes and makes fun of itself. And it's been really good, too. Um, they've hit a few, you know, serious episodes here and there about certain topics that you're just like, well, shit, I never, you know, really thought about that. But it, it, it's still a good show um, if, you know, you're not watching it and you can I- enjoy some education with some of your uh, comedy. You'll like it because I do hit on a few things about stuff and I was just like thoroughly enjoyed some of the stuff they talk about. Um, but it, it, it's been, it's been, that one's been pretty good too. Um, it's interesting how they do provide some education into it. Cause it's always like, you know, I've got something to talk about and this one doesn't lead back to slavery. And they're like, well, shit, this does lead back to slavery. <laughs> and they just, you know, they just rib each other all the time through it. Uh, and they, they make light and joke about everything that goes on, but it's still solid, solid, good, uh, fun. So, I mean, there's another TV show. There's very few TV shows I watch now, but those are I the ones I can I love their stand. episode about Prince. Oh, their episode of Prince was amazing. Um, especially all the cameos of them doing their Dressing Prince version. Dressing up in yes. uh, his iconic outfits. Yes, those were amazing. Um, I love that. That was a great episode. So, yes, I'll agree with you on that one. Um, so, but I mean, there's, there's it, it, it's still good. If you like a, like a good comedy, um, go watch it. Uh, and, and a good make fun of themselves. Like this episode was about camping outdoors. And they're like, what's the one thing black people don't do? And you can see that the wheels are turning and people are like going to say something else. We don't camp. And it goes into the whole thing and it just plays on it. And it's really good. It's really fun. Um, but um, what else came out? Um... I have been watching a lot of Beat Bobby Flay. If you're into like cooking shows, um, I do like watching that show because it's a little different than your typical cooking show, but still provides some cool things. I'm like, what the fuck are they cooking with? And they're like, oh, this is this. And I'm like, what is that thing? Oh, this type of salami. <laughs> I'm like, what are they? Co-? I have no clue. Yeah, um, so we've reached our two minute warning. Uh oh. That means I'm, oh. and I'm almost done with painting this model, too. I haven't even drank my tea yet. I'll have to okay. nuke it so it's warm again. <laughs> but, um, it's been alright. Like I said, TV's now back on. Series and shows are coming back on. So we got a lot of stuff coming back. Um, and of course I'm back to work, so that means I can't watch as much stuff anymore. Especially you won't become in the media section like, I watched nine movies this week and four TV series on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> on the way home yeah. but uh so that has been good uh guys if you are uh interested and in, you know that you're going to be um online on uh monday kathy will be streaming live on twitch monday morning monday morning and thursday, noon. And thursday morning uh doing that uh i will be streaming our Donna the Harbinger episode, so you could watch that live. Uh, the cast or the crew or whatever 
do not respond and cannot see uh, what anybody's saying, so they won't respond to that, so we can keep the game going, because it is a game, and if you're new, you may want to go back and re-listen to those episodes, because, oh, hell is broken loose, um, because right now they are trying to infiltrate, and they're assaulting a Sith base, where they've kept some of their... And where can people find those episodes? Um, you will be able to find them if you're uh, listening on Muse, or you can go to our iTunes channel or our SoundCloud channel and get them on an RSS feed. Um, let's see what else. Um, I think that was about it. Thanks for joining us. Yep. I'm John. Damn I'm it, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's 30. Good night, folks. We will see y'all later. Night. Good night. I have to wait for the right moment. I don't want it to be too soon, but I gotta get try and get in before Gonzo. That Always perfect. before me. Well, you know, it's it's a goal. You gotta have goals, or you get bored. Oh man, let's yeah, end that it. Movie. Fuck that movie. <laughs>